Greetings learners, this is Miss Russ and you are starting the Drawing Center Level F skill video. This is where we're going to find out that drawing and painting are actually extremely similar. As you can tell, I have a lot going on at my school today and we have some lovely music practice in the background. So let's get started. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and find a sketchbook page, but it can be one that's kind of wrinkly because we're not going to be working in this page. Then you want to go ahead and make sure that your name is on it. You're going to circle that you're going to the drawing center and then you're going to write down that this is level F. After that, you can set this aside because we're going to be doing all of our work on heavier paper. So you'll have to go to Miss Russ or your teacher and ask for some heavier weight paper and it comes in kind of smaller sizes. I think these are about five by five. So they will get taped into your book once we are all done. Okay, let's go ahead and take a minute to see the long list of what we have to learn. So rather than read the whole list this time, I'm just gonna do little bits at a time. So first off, our goal is to create shading using watercolor pencils. Ooh, this is a new supply. We are going to plan out our artwork for the subject and for the color use. We're going to add a water from the background to the foreground. We're going to have to talk about drawing time, making things 3D, and adding color to the whole picture. But first, we need to start with, wow, how do we use a watercolor pencil? So, the watercolor pencils come and they look like this. You can tell that they're a watercolor pencil because our set happens to have a color end and it also is in the supplies for the watercolor pencil. So really make sure you're always putting these back and not getting them confused with the other pencils. Okay, once you're sure you have your watercolor pencils, you're gonna take one of your papers and I'm going to get you down as close as we can here. You are going to go ahead and make some of those tornadoes like we've done before. You're going to do a couple of tornadoes where you push hard the whole time, but you do two different colors. You're going to do a little swatch of color, a line of color, and then I want you to take two colors that you know when mixed together make something new. So I picked yellow and blue, and I know that mixed together, that should make green. I'm also going to get out a tracer, and using one of the bigger shapes, I'm going to do a couple of tracing so I have some place to practice. Okay, let's start with how this material works. So, once you have these guys down, we're going to get little containers of water, and then we also have a couple of different brush sizes. So go ahead and pull out those different brush sizes now. Open up your container of water. Let's go ahead and start with the medium brush size and let's wake up our brush. Okay, and of course we know that we always are brushing. We're not jamming. At this point, you're pretty much an expert on how to take care of supplies. And what I want you to realize is how quickly you can take this material and erase all of the lines to create color. You can also take this supply and as you add color, you can see that you can create different tones. So I have a darker purple on the top and then it does a little mixing and gets lighter down at the bottom with that use of that other color because it dilutes the purple. Okay, now we have to review something about how water works with art. So right now, this water is staying exactly wherever I put it. And that means the color is staying exactly wherever I put it. But I'm going to purposefully, and right now I want you to do this too, I'm going to get this side wet. There's no color here, but I'm just going to get this side wet. Okay? Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to switch out to the small brush. And I'm going to go ahead and wake up this watercolor section right here. And I'm not going to touch where I've got it wet. 
So I'm using my little brush so I have a lot of control over where I'm getting wet and what lines I'm making. Look, I can even pull this out into a different line if I want. What I want you to notice, and I'll put it up closer so you can see, is over time this line is going to bleed over where I had the water. But where it was dry, those lines will stay nice, clean, and crisp. So it's very important that you are aware of whether the paper is wet. And it can lie to you. The way to tell if your paper is wet is when you touch it, if it feels cold. Dry paper should feel like nothing. Like it should feel the temperature of the room. But wet paper is going to feel cold to the touch. And if your fingers can't tell the difference, you can use the back of your finger or you can use your cheek, but then you might get some paint on your cheek. So just, just watch for that. If the paper feels cold, then we know we can't put water next to it. Okay, let's switch over to this little brush again and let's practice how we make the line nice and small. And then I want you to also practice how you can take this line and wiggle it around. Okay, finally let's switch over to the big brush and as you suspect, you can take two colors and you can mix them together to make a new one. All right, so how do we use this to actually shade something? Well, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure you get out a variety of colors. And then we don't have to, because we know the lines totally disappear, we don't have to have beautiful shading with these. Instead, we wanna pay attention to where we're putting the color. So if I wanted to shade this circle so it looked 3D, I am going to draw lines that follow the curvature of the circle, and I'm going to do dark lines down towards the bottom. And then rather than push lightly up here, I'm going to switch out for a lighter color. And then I'm going to switch into a different color. So I'm changing the spectrum of the colors. And I would do that until I kind of filled up the whole area. And I would make sure, like we can see on this one, I have some darks down here. Right? And even taking the time to add some white. Like you can't see it, but all these spaces that look empty actually have white in them. And so once you complete that whole area, which this is very similar to what we learned in level E, then you're ready to add your water. You want to start always in the light sections. And again, you have to wake it up. And I work in little teeny tiny circles. And I actually purposefully leave some of the line. Having a smooth, clean, crisp picture is not always what you want to go for. But notice I'm slowly moving into the darker areas of the circle so that I can create that 3D effect. And if I want to pull this color up, you'll notice I'm just doing little, little dots and I'm letting kind of the dot bleed into the other. So go ahead and take time to practice two circles. Okay, once you've done this whole practice, which by now, if you haven't paused the video and done something, I would do so, we're gonna switch over to the element of making an actual art piece. So this is what it looks like when you're all done, is you'll notice that you have these kind of clean, crisp, well, like, like it, it looks like a painting, but yet you see these lines like it's a drawing. So let's talk about how you make that happen. So we go ahead and we're going to go right here. I made a brand new design because that was one of my skills. And I, I don't know, it's kind of like a planet and it has these balls on it. And then um, you want to go ahead and color in, but notice if you look close, you can see I used three or four colors and sometimes I just colored it all in normal and other times I tried to make things a nice strong line. Even where the planet surface is, I did a bold color when it's close to me 
And then I did a grayer version of that color further away so that I can create distance. And then I would take the time to go ahead and shade everything in, including the shadows. But I don't have to worry about it being perfectly done, right? Because I know that I can move that color wherever I want it. And then I'm taking those skills that I used and practiced here to actually shade in the different elements. So again, I'm doing those darker colors towards the bottom. And then as I get higher into the circle, if I'm going to create something that's 3D, I'm switching out for a lighter color. And then I might even switch into a totally different color altogether. Like I'm going to add in a little yellow. And I make sure if I switch out to a different color altogether that I take it down a little bit into the dark areas. And then I'm also adding those shadow elements. And I happen to be using the gray for the shadow elements rather than the black because I think sometimes the black can be a little too intense and a little hard to control. Okay, once you feel like you've got it all shaded, and keep in mind, the closer something is to you, the cleaner and crisper the shading is going to be. So, Miss Russ is getting a little picky with it, but look how many times I switch out colored pencils, look at how much color I'm adding down, right? All of that kind of slowly built. Okay, let's talk about how to color in the background, because notice none of this has had water. So I'm going to take that darker color and I'm doing those um, tornadoes like we've learned about, and I'm getting kind of close to the edge, but I'm not worried about perfection. And then I'm going to take that lighter color and I'm going to do the tornado going the opposite direction. And so that's how I'm going to get that this effect is these are just layered tornadoes on top of each other. Okay, when I add water, the next thing I need to consider is I always do whatever is furthest back first. Whoa, that is different. Whatever is furthest back gets the water added first. Well, why do we do that? It's because I have more control and can correct errors if I work from the back towards the front. If I did all of these pieces first, now you have to pretend that that's colored, it would be really easy for me to accidentally bleed or mess these up while I was trying to fill in around them. So artists go from the background to the foreground to prevent that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my brush wet. And I'm going to add my water to the background area. And you notice that I'm creating that clean line first. And then I'm filling in the space behind. And I'm letting the water do the work. I'm not over brushing. I'm not scrubbing. I don't need to do that. This is very a nice clean quality supply. And then I know I can go right around here because I haven't added any water yet. And I'm taking the time to add quite a bit. If you can tell, like if I pick this up right now, this water would drip off of here. There's that much water on the surface and I'm letting it soak into the paper. And you can see as it's soaked in, see how the effect that's starting to happen is it's having a big influence over the whole thing, right? Okay, now once I've colorivered all of this, here, here is the sad news. I now have to wait because can I go in and, and color this like planet part? No, if I were to do that, all of this purple and all of that, um, orange would like bleed together. So I have a couple of options. Our classroom um, or the classroom you're in probably has 
some sort of hair dryer and you can go ahead and dry this off until it feels um, like not cold to the touch. It just feels neutral. Or you can go off and do other learning and come to this back to this the next day. But once you finish, if you take your time, then you will have a lovely piece of art that you are going to put into your sketchbook and take to your teacher for signatures. Oh, enjoy your experience, ew, experience with watercolor. I know this was a long video, but hopefully you paused it often so that you could really take the time to dive in to using this incredible supply. Bye.